Now, though these dolphins from time to time will happily roll up and look up at you from the, from the uh, surface of the sea, and they will be checking you out, they see colour, they see the same way that we do, but they have got one other added advantage to getting themselves around out here. They also use sonar or echolocation. Now this is hundreds of clicks per second that these dolphins are able to produce. Those clicks then bounce off the objects that are in front of them and it's believed to come back and form a picture in the dolphin's mind. So they know the distance um, between them and a rock or them and a fish, whatever it happens to be that's in front of them. So the, uh, the dolphins certainly uh, know how to get themselves around in the dark. But... Okay. Now there's quite a lot of seaweed that's floating around and just at this uh, stage these guys are in a, in a fairly cruisy sort of a mood. And uh, so these dolphins will sometimes Sometimes pick up the uh, um, um, these guys will sometimes pick up those little bits of seaweed, as I said, and haul it around on their fins, just as a little bit of an um, introduction to game play. Something you may not realise about these dolphins as well, in fact, every whale and dolphin on the planet is actually a voluntary breather. Unlike us, we breathe automatically. So when you see whales and dolphins coming up to the surface and opening up their blowhole, they're usually uh, very quickly expelling air and then inhaling a fresh breath. And um, it's voluntarily done or consciously done. So this means that when whales or dolphins sleep or rest, they have to do that in a completely different manner to us. Now they have this ability to be able to shut down half of their brain at a time when they go to sleep. And the other half of the brain will actually remain awake so to, to breathe, to be aware of what's happening around them. Later on in the day or the night, when the pod decides that they're going to rest again, oh, we'll miss, oh no, it's somebody else, Pog maybe, picking up some um, seaweed on her dorsal fin. So when they decide they're going to sleep again, they will shut down the alternative side of the brain that hasn't yet had its sleep. So it works like having catnaps, and these sleeping uh, situations can be for 10 minutes, or they can be for well up to a couple of hours. Now we've got little Rondi, who's obviously spending lots of time playing underneath us. And as I mentioned before, we have a special license uh, issued to us by the Department of Conservation to spend time commercially with dolphins. And Rondi has raced back to Brown, his mum. Oh, now he's come back to the bow again. He's like, just checking in with mum. I'm here, mum, I'm okay. Just playing with the humans. And Rompi, though, um, he's allowed to come and obviously have a little play around underneath the bow and ride the pressure wave that we, we create as we go forward. If at any stage we were to um, start erratically moving around in a different way um, with our boat behaviour, then she would probably uh, call him straight back alongside. Each dolphin has their own signature whistle. And somebody like Rondi, growing up with mum, will learn a very similar signature whistle to her mum. Now the... Um, the stage that Rondi uh, grows up and matures into an adult, usually at about six years or so of age, uh, he will leave home, go off, do something else, live with other dolphins and other pods, but there will be opportunities along his travels where he will still come across his mum and in uh, different movements along the coastline. Now they will recognise each other throughout their whole lifetime together uh, as being related through that signature whistle. So they, though they may not necessarily always live together, they will meet up with each other from time to time. And this will prevent any inbreeding from going on. Oh, Rondi might be having a quick drink then. See him pop right up underneath his mum. Might be going to do that again. Yeah. 
Nope. If you've got polarized sunglasses on, it does make a huge difference to see underneath the surface. Yep, he is. He's having another little suckle from mum. Now, Rondi will have uh, very little whiskers around the beak. And he goes up underneath his mum's tail stock there, where her mammary gland slits are. And he very quickly stimulates the glands with his whiskers. And he will cusp his tongue up against the roof of the beak and form a tunnel. So very quickly, just for a matter of seconds, milk will be squirted into his mouth. And um, he will do this constantly throughout the day and the night. Now, mum's milk is made up of about 40% fat, so physically he will grow quite quickly. He also needs that high fat content in her milk to keep himself insulated and healthy. Now, in fact, all dolphins, like us, have the same body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. But when you're a little baby, you need extra fat. So drinking mum's milk is highly important. And we're lucky again because of all the rules and the regulations in New Zealand, we are not allowed to swim with dolphins in this country that have babies with them. And this is because the babies need to be able to feed from mum. Now, if she was to get stressed out um, and stop lactation, unfortunately, it would be a very sad ending to those youngsters. So it's important for them to be able to, to feed from mum. There are many rules and regulations set out in New Zealand to help protect them. Now, those rules and regulations also prove quite well because we know of dolphins having average lifespans out here in the wild of 50 to 60 years, and that's just an average. Now, at captivity, it is completely different. Dolphins are very stressed out in captive situations like marine parks and they have an average lifespan of around 12 years. So that's a huge difference when you consider the dolphins you're watching here will have an average lifespan of around good 50 to 60 years. And a lot of that's to do also with the fact that whales and dolphins have a very low immune system. So of course if they're stuck in a concrete pond that harbors bacteria and um, feed their fish that harbor bacteria, it puts them at a much higher risk of uh, catching disease and um, and dying in early life. Dying in early life? <laughs> dying in early death, I should say. It's a little bit mixed up there. <laughs> so we're very proud to be able to uh, find dolphins out here and be able to show you uh, what they should naturally be doing in their lives. They do have uh, natural predators that they have to keep a watch and a listen out for. The first one is orca or killer whales, which are basically the largest of the dolphin family. And we do get orca cruising around our coastline, um, randomly showing up in places just like the Bay of Islands, but they do travel all around New Zealand. And they're not always interested in eating dolphins. Sometimes they will uh, be more interested in things like stingrays and eagle rays and various other large fish that are cruising around. But the dolphins still do keep a weary listen out just in case. The other natural predator that, orca, uh, that dolphins have, apart from the orca or killer whales, is um, sharks. Now, again, dolphins like Rondi, who are little, have to stay quite close. If he's not cruising in alongside mum, he will have other adults here that are also watching over him and helping to protect him from shark attacks because he's a little bit small. He's at a much more vulnerable state of being uh, taken out by a shark. So by having adults in the pod, this is part of their protection for one another.
Now, it looks like they're going to go into one of Brownie's favourite little bays here. We, this is actually a, a, a bay here that she knows very well. We do often see her coming in here. And uh, this is a place called Paroa Bay. And uh, there's usually lots of mullet flounder up in these sorts of areas. Leather jackets for cream fish. These dolphins feed on many different varieties of fish. I suspect they'll probably head up in here to have a little bit of a forage around for something to eat. Unfortunately, they are taking us in the wrong direction, so we do have to keep a watch on the time and um, make sure that we're, we're back in time. So we're going to just quietly let them get on with their thing, and, uh, and we'll move off and, and continue with the rest of our trip.